Hey everybody, welcome back to Millennium Blades and now we're going to move on from the deck building to the tournament. Very exciting. And as you may notice, things have actually moved around. I've kind of rearranged stuff in between uh, the first video and the second video. Uh, in part because, well, one thing you have to do is you have to completely flip over your board because you go from the deck building side, what I've been playing up to now, to the tournament side. Now, I've already set Jen up. She's got her deck that um, she built. Which, um, actually, I, I, I worked on this a little bit between the videos. I, based on the cards she kind of got randomly, plus what she had in her starting deck. And she did a little bit of buying. And so Jen has come to the tournament with this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards in her deck, ready to go. She also made two collections, like me. So before the tournament start, oh, and by the way, I should say, this is at the end of the deck building phase, this is what your area should look like. Not the big sloppy mess that I ended with. That's why you have those final three minutes, so you can get every all your ducks in a row. Your binder is where all the cards that you didn't use go, so you can save them for future rounds. Your deck area is what you brought, and you've already seen me build this deck in real time as I was going, so we'll see how well this deck does. And then over here are my collections. Now, when you're playing normally with three or four or five players, or, you know, when you're, you're playing more than two players, your collections score you victory points based on how big they are. And you only have one collection at most. But in a two-player game, you could build two collections and you don't score them for victory points because victory points don't exist in the two-player game. In the two-player game, you're trying to win best two out of three in the tournament. Just straight up wins. So these uh, collections are going to help in the tournament. So before I get moving, let's go on ahead and flip everything. So you can see all my ducks are in a row. I got my collections. I got my deck. I got my leftover. So my leftover cards, I'm just going to put them over here along with Jen's, so because we'll use them in future rounds, the cards we didn't bring. Here's my deck. Now let's flip this sucker. And there we go. So everything has its own place here. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if I want to slide stuff. No, I need to see Jen's points. Um, but anyway, so as, as you can see at the bottom, you've got space for your deck box and your accessories. And well, let's see, let's get my deck back out. Here's my deck of cards. Where's my deck box? Here, okay, here's my accessories. Here's my deck protector. You can bring, as you can see, up to two accessories and one deck box. So I've laid out, I've got my deck box and my two accessories there. And then the rest of my cards, these are the cards I can actually play in the tournament. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This could be up to 10 cards, although you will only play six. But it's good to have variation in case things don't go your way and you have to change your plans. So I've brought eight of six of which I will play during this tournament. Now, Jen. Let's see. Oh, uh, let's get her collections out of the way. Come back to those in a second. Jen's deck. Where are her? Right. So she has got one accessory, a deck protector, and um, she's got her own deck box. This is one of the ones she, uh, she drew randomly. It's Toil and Trouble. Now, the deck box, this card represents all the non-rare cards. Because you know how the reality of buying a CCG is you go down to the store, you say, hey, I'll get an expansion pack from Ars Magica. And these usually have like 15 cards in them or something like that. Most of them are commons, but there's sometimes one or two, there's rares in here, one or two, depending on the game. And so when you when in the game, in the deck building phase, when you buy this, this is the rare that was in this expansion pack. The other 14 cards that were common or uncommon, they are kind of abstracted and represented by your deck. My, this deck is all of my common and uncommon cards. Because, you know, I, I didn't actually come to this tournament with only eight cards. I've got eight rare cards plus all my commons. And so that's what the deck box is. It represents those and it gives you a special power. So Jen's deck box is... At the end of the tournament, she gets 25 points if she has no cards left in her hand. And that's why Jen brought a deck with exactly six cards. One, two, three, four, five. No, this is my deck. Where's Jen's deck? Here's Jen's deck. One, two, three, four, five, six. She has exactly six cards. These are the exact cards she's going to play. She has no flexibility, no room to maneuver, no options. She must play these six cards. But when she plays them all, at the end of the tournament, she'll score 25 points because she was like very lean and efficient. Me, I came with extra cards because I've got more flexibility. So anyway, so that's Jen's special power. She's got a deck protector, which she can use to prevent one of her cards from being flipped by me, you know, to prevent attack. I've got two protector cards to protect myself from Jen. And remember, my special thing. This was the special promo we got from Sealed Vaults. At the end, I get seven points for every water card in my tableau, which is quite nice. If I recall correctly, I think I ended up with three water cards. Now, at the beginning of the tournament, everybody has zero points. All right. Although, at the end of the tournament, 
our, what do you call them, our collections will come into play. And, you know, so I, you know, I'm going to set my collections over here to the side because uh, I got to remember. Uh, so I, well, actually, I guess there's no, I didn't think about it. There's no particular reason not to score them right at the beginning because it's not like they're going to change. So how many, how many points do you get for your collections? For every card in a successful collection, that's worth 10 rank points towards winning the tournament. So this was my collection of fire cards, a one, two, three, five. Remember, they have to have different numbers. So that's four cards. So that's 40 points. I'm already at 40 points because I showed up, I impressed everybody with my amazing collection. Because winning this tournament isn't so much just about winning and losing, it's about impressing everybody and, you know, scoring the most prestige. So, I mean, everybody was very, very impressed by this wonderful collection. It was worth 40 points. And now that I've used this collection, all of these cards are removed from the game. Remember, I started with a fire. I've gotten rid of these. These are out of the game. I can never use them again. But they scored me 40 points. So uh, they were trashed to good use. And then I also had this collection of animal cards. Five of them, each one with a unique value, so that's five more points. So, I'm starting, just based on the prestige of my amazing collection, at 90 points. Now, let's actually, let's just do it now, instead of later. Where's Jen's collection? Uh, see, that's her deck. Yeah, here's her collection. Now, Jen started with the Brown Wall City, so you can see she used a lot of her starter deck cards to make a collection. Let's see what she got. So, yeah, there's these Earth cards. A one, two, three, four, and five. That's five, so that is 50 points, and then these are removed from the game. So that's 50 for Jen. And then she has another collection of fire. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Wait, what's this? Oh, wait, hey, well, hold on a second. Oh, I got her collection. So actually, um, she actually had six. She had six. Um, so actually, that was 60. So her first collection of six cards was worth 60. And then her second collection of fire cards, there's only three of them, a three, a four, and a five. And this one she bought from me. I, I basically sold this to her. And so this second collection is only worth 30 points. So coincidentally, both Jen and I are starting this tournament at exactly nine points because we had collections of equal value. So set collection is a big part of this game. Okay, and so we've worked that out. And remember, the set collection going to rank points is only in the two-player game. Normally, the set collection is for victory points at the end of the game. All right, so we've done that. We're starting the tournament. We both have 90-point excellent collections. Now we can start playing. Now, the way the tournament works is uh, the first time you, the first tournament you play in the game, it's random who goes first. So I'll just go first. In future rounds, because there's three tournaments potentially, it, the the uh, the future rounds, it's whoever won the previous tournament gets to go first. But okay, in this tournament, I'll go first. So Jen got her deck of cards ready to go and we'll just keep that off screen and here's my deck of cards so now I have to remember what was I was gonna do okay okay I had this guy who wanted to have the the, the matching things on either side of him right wasn't that the case yeah he needed the matching because which means um, right and what were the matching things that were gonna be on either side of him it was gonna be oh dear have I made a terrible mistake all right hold on a second let's see now, I know these two cards, this 7 and this 10, I brought these specifically because I'm going to sacrifice them to, um, what card was it? The, the uh, Link, because that, you know, so these guys are, are here with him. So those are together. This guy wants, or where was he? This guy wants two types on either side of him. And what was it? Right, it was going to be the Devil and the Boatman. Oh, dear. But there's a problem with that. So that means this guy will score 12 points for each card on either side of him that has, a, um, that has the same type. But the devil, if um, or the whole point of the devil was to flip all your cards and gain 30. The devil is going to go away. When I use his power, he's going to flip, and then he's not going to be on the other side of the Birkenstock chemist. Oh, no. Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. And now it's interesting. The rules have a very specific... Um, the section about this because there's so much going on in the deck building phase it is very easy to forget one key element you're building the ultimate strategy and then it all blows up in your face now there's maybe a save I could do because I could put I, I've got these two types I could put them on either side of the chemist but then I don't have this I'm you know then it means I don't have this to sacrifice to link and the other problem is, I don't want this card to stay face up. I want this card to get flipped, because if this card is face up at the end of the game, I lose 15 points, plus another 20 because it's a fire card. So this card has to get flipped. So shoot, I think that means I might, I'm not going to get advantage. Gain 12 points if both types, if both cards adjacent to this one have the same type. Oh, I totally messed this up. So my question is, I'm going to have to ask myself, 
Do I want to activate? If I activate the Devil card, it will flip. So it uh, so that Birkenstock, the chemist, that means that's twelve. That's twelve points. Twelve points at both. Yeah, it's only twelve points I'm losing to get thirty. So I think I've made a terrible mistake. There's no other way I can save this with the cards I've got, is there? Nope, not unless I want to lose fifteen from that. So. Well, you know, at least it's still water, and that means it's going to be worth seven points. All right. Anyway, so slight change of plans because of all that. Well, let's see. First of all, the first card I'm going to play, and when you play cards, you play from left to right. So I'm going to play my first card. It is going to be the Cannon Technician Merrill. This is, I think, my only starter card I still have from my original fire deck. Now, as soon as she enters, as soon as she is played, I gain five, 15 points. So that is, let's see, I'm at 90. So basically, I go to 105. All right, so I'm at 105. But now here's the problem. If this card is still in my tableau at the end of the tournament, I'm going to lose 15 points plus 20. I'll lose 35 points if I don't get rid of her somehow. So that's a problem. And that's where, that's what the devil is for. The devil is supposed to get rid of Merrill. All right. But that means that Birkenstock won't score. But, you know, it's more important to, yeah. All right. So it's, it's still fine anyway. So that was my first card. I have played a card. Now it is Jen's turn. She's got her hand of six cards. She's going to play her first card. And what is she going to play? I think she'll just go on ahead and play, what the heck, she'll play the card from the uh, the Rubber Ducky Made uh, Crusaders, which is obviously a reference to Tantacora, is um, she's going to be Ducky Pink. Now, this card doesn't have any effect when it first comes in. At the end of the tournament, this card will earn Jen four ranking points for every other card in her tableau that is either two-star, light-based, or mage. And now, one of the things you'll notice is... This is going to be a recurring pattern. Jen's Toil and Trouble is a mage card. So this is going to score four points. You know, so that's going to make Jen's deck box. Currently, it's going to score 25 points. Now it's scoring 29 points because of Ducky Pink. So that was Jen's first move. Now it's my second move. Let's go again. And I'm going to play a card. And now the thing is, I got... Well, if I... Oh, here's a problem. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Okay, my next card I'm going to play. That's right, that's right. I, I, I did this right. I'm going to play Mystic Hero Link. <gasps> oh no! Oh shoot! Wow, I have totally messed up. Oh. Right, so here's the thing. Mystic Hero Link, now his special powers, upon entry, I can discard, I can basically um, discard two cards. And I brought these along because for every card I discard, up to two, I get their total star rating. So this is 17 points I get for discarding both of these. Plus, it increases Link's star power from a 6 to an 8. That's what the text says. And now, and then the next thing I can do is, hey, boom, I can play the devil. Hooray. The devil will say, oh, the guy to my left, because remember, that's what the devil does. The, uh, the star rating is, of the, the star rating, if this card's star rating is lower than the card to the left, this is a five, this is an eight, then that means the devil will take all of these, score 30 points, and flip them. And that's the thing. I mean, I can't put the devil down next because then the devil is a higher value and won't flip the cannon tech. And I got to get rid of the cannon technician. So if I do this, that's great. I'll score 30 points on the next round. And in the meantime, I scored 17 points. But as soon as I flip this, my error is going to go away. And remember, one of the meta is there's 15 points to be had if you have an error card. Oh my gosh. I thought I had such a clever plan and strategy. But now if I flip this, I lose that 15 points, but I gain 30. And I still have the Mythic, so I'll get 15 additional points. Shoot! Do I have any other air cards? No, this was my air card. And originally I hadn't planned to flip it. But I have to have a card that has a value higher. Now here's the other thing I could do. I could totally change my plans. Instead of playing Mythic Hero Link, I could have played you know, Imperial, right? And then I could have played the Devil. And so the Devil will still get to flip. And then I could bring out Mythic Link next, and then I could get rid of like a 7 and... Um, oh, I could get rid of the Birkenstock, because the Birkenstock's not going to do their 12 points anyway, because I screwed that up. So then I'd get 9 points off of Link. So that's not bad. And then I still got these two guys who, let's see, what were I... Oh, right. If the star rating is lower, if this card is lower than the one... And so then I could put this down, and so this would still do its power as well, gain 5 ranking points for each... Right, but I, okay, I want this to be the last one because then I get five for everything. So that means if this goes this... I'm having to change my plans right on the, on the fly. Wow. I think it's worth it, though. I think because of my terrible goof, my second card I'm going to play is not, as originally planned, going to be Mythic Hero Link. It's going to be Imperial Assassin, who has a high value of 10 but doesn't have anything else. No special effect. All right, so... 
And now Jen says, oh, that's very interesting. I think Jen means that she, her second card is she's going to play Murmur of the Merman. Remember, this is another card I sold into the market and Jen bought it. And now she's going to use it against me. It is a mythic, which means its existence is going to score Jen 15. Oh, oh my gosh, there's so much. <sighs> right, so that's, oh dear, I thought, I forgot about that. Wow. Okay, Jen's got a tough choice to make. I didn't realize that. Does she have any other? No, she doesn't. Gosh, she can get 15, but that's 15. Gain three. Okay, so Jen's going to play this. Now, on your turn, there's actually two things you do. You must play one card. If you, if, you do, if you don't play a card, the tournament is over for you, and you just wait for everybody else to be done, and then you get final score. So you must play a card. And in addition to that, if you have any cards that have the word, the keyword action, you can initiate that action. That means you flip the card, so it's effectively out of the game, but you get to do the action. So Jen's going to put this merman out, and this gives her an action. She can flip this, and that would let her initiate a clash. And a clash is when two players fight, and there's a winner and a loser, and you know it's how you really interact with each other. And so if Jen plays this, this is an interesting clash. Clash with an opponent. The loser of the clash earns 15 points, and the winner must flip a card in their tableau. Um, and let's see, now alternatively, so if you have this clash, this is going to flip and it's gone. If you never clash with this, at the end, you'll get three points for every mage card in your tableau. And now right off the bat, you can see Jen's got two mage cards here. If she never clashes with this, at the end, this is six additional points for the two mage cards she's got. But if she does clash with this and she loses, she will get 15 points and she will force me to flip one of my cards. And that could really mess me up. And so Jen has put this out now, and she has an option. She could add action or she could not. And now the thing is, she was thinking, hey, I'll totally do it. Because remember, she wants to lose. And what you do is, when you have a clash, you compare your rightmost face-up card with your opponent's rightmost face-up card. In this case, Jen's rightmost is a 4, and mine is a 10. But it's not over. What happens is, that's the base value. So right off the bat, Jen is losing, which is good, because you want to lose in a clash with the merman. But then, each player draws a card from the top of the deck, and adds that. So there's a little bit of uncertainty. But the person who initiates the clash, they can see the top card of the deck. And you know, based on the value, the higher the value card... So if Jen draws this, she's um, taking a 4. And then, she doesn't know what's next, but I'll draw a 3. That means there's a good chance that I'll get a lower value card than her. Uh, you know, if Jen could see this, and so Jen's got to make a decision. Does she want to initiate a clash? Well, here's the problem. I, again, this is something I did not think about when I was building because, you know, because of the limited time. If Jen initiates this and she wins, that's great. She earns 15 points. She potentially makes me flip a card. That might mess up my plans. But she gives up on the bonus points at the end of the game for having mage cards. And because this is her only mythic card, she gives up 15 points for that because she has no other mythic card in her deck. So I think Jen plays this. She could do an action, in which case we draw cards. And now the interesting thing is, if we did the action, after, you know, let's say Jen did do the action. She said, to heck with it. I, we're going to clash. She would draw, and she has 4 plus 6. Her total is 10. I've got 10 plus 5. No surprise, Jen loses. Now both of these cards that are drawn, they go into the market. They will be cards that are for sale in the aftermarket in the next tournament. So the next time we go into the deck building phase, depending on how many clashes there were, there will be cards already available to buy right from the beginning of the timed phase. But you know what? Here's the thing. It's a, it's a net loss for Jen because she's losing her 15 points. She could get that to do the 15 points, all to force me to flip my card. And here's the thing. If Jen were to force me to flip my card, remember, I've got a deck protector. I could flip it instead and protect my card. So I think Jen has decided. Originally, she put this in to do a clash, but she doesn't want to lose the 15 points from the myth. So she could clash, but she's not going to do it. Now it's time for my next card. And now it's time to bring out the devil. All right. And remember, upon entry, if this card star rating is lower than the one on the left, and it is, this is a 5 to a 10, then the devil says, yes, now um, you are all mine. Flip all your cards and gain 30 points. So the devil is going to take all these cards, because this is from the Hell to Pay expansion. So there was Hell to Pay. It's going to flip everything and score 30 points. One, two, three. 30 points. And now, the beautiful thing is, I have flipped this card, and so I've gotten rid of the negative 15 points plus the negative 20. So that's 35 points I won't be losing. All right, so that was pretty nice. That worked out nicely. And now it's Jen's turn to play her next card. 
Right, what is she gonna play next? Uh, right, so she is gonna play Ducky Red. Okay, now remember, Jen still has the option to do an act. She could do the action before. Um, but it's interesting, right now, if she did a clash, I don't. she can't clash with me because I don't have any face-up cards. I believe you can only clash with somebody if they've got a face-up card. So, Jen can't clash with me even if she wants. She's going to play Ducky Red. Now, Ducky Red, much like Ducky Pink, th this is the theme of Jen's deck. She got several of these duckies, and so she tried to make a combo deck based on their power. This is going to score points at the end of the game for, for every level 6 star power card, plus every fire card, plus every mage card. So, right off the bat, this doesn't do anything, but, hey, here's two mage cards. That is eight points off of these two things right there. Okay, so that was Jen's next card. Now, my next card. All right, so, right. All right, this has to be my last card. And if this card rating is lower than the card to its left, so I have to play Link right before this. Cannot gain, including you, uh, at the start of your turn for this card. Cards can't be attached. All right, so I'm going to play um, Dauntless the Frozen. Although, see, that's the thing. The only reason I put him, he scores me no points. All he does is, if I play him now, I don't score any points this round, and neither does Jen. So, if Jen wanted to play a point-scoring card this turn, she wouldn't be able to do it, and that might mess up her plans. But the thing is, he's not as interesting now, because the only reason I even included him was to trigger Birkenstock's ability. And now, I have to give up on Birkenstock's ability, because I got, I got rid of my other Myth card. Um, oh, so that was quite dumb. So do I actually even want to play him? I've got three more cards I could play. Let's see. So I had only kept this around to score the points. What does this do? Mimicry. This card copies an element. Oh! Copies an element of the type of the card on its left, losing its own. Oh, but that's element. Birkenstock doesn't care about elements. Birkenstock cares about types. See, ongoing. Your face-down cards have mimicry. They are considered to have zero stars. So that means all of these things would mimic... But you know what? I mean, if it all mimics something to the left, there isn't anything to the left. So this thing doesn't do anything for me because I don't care about elements. I care about types. Wait a minute. Oh no, that's not true. I do care about elements because I get seven points for every water element card. So if this comes out, if I make this my last one and make this one before, that means this will be another seven points because it will become that. But this one, I want this to be far left because this gets me five points for everything to the left of it. But this is seven points, so that's actually two more points. So I think that changes everything. If I do this and this, and then I do Link, so if I do Link, that's six points I get for Link. Um, and then I get this, but then I get seven. So I'm netting two more points by playing this, but I'm losing three points because I'm sacrificing this to Link instead of this. So I think on the whole, you know what, even though this could be a cool switch, I'm, it's, it's lo less net points, so I'm going to go with the original plan. I'm going to put out Dauntless the Frozen. It doesn't help me at all. It's my top card. So as long as it's my top card, players cannot gain rank points, including me. And at the start of my next turn, flip that card. All right. Oh, shoot. If I flip this card, that means that's seven less points I get. Ah! Oh! Right. So, I was going to get seven points off of this, but now this card does literally nothing for me because it will flip itself. So that's seven less points I get. So now that means this thing, which won't get flipped and will be worth seven points, this is worth more. So I am instead... Right. That changes everything. I am instead going to play Mythic Link. It's a good thing I had these extra cards, so I had some flexibility because I made some miscalculations, obviously. So I play Mythic Link. Discard up to two cards from my hand. The two cards I don't care about are Birkenstock, because I totally messed him up. But if I discard these, that's 14 points I'm discarding because... Well, now, okay, I definitely need to discard Dauntless because as soon as he comes out, he's going to flip anyway. At the start of, of your turn, flip this card. So, right. So he's never going to get me anything. So he's useless. So I'm going to discard him. So that's four points I get. One, two, three, four. Oh, such a terrible. And now Link has gone from a level six to a level seven. It says that you, know, you add a little plus one star rating marker on here. And so I'm discarding another. I'm not discarding either of these. So I will go on ahead and discard Birkenstock. I'm throwing seven points away, but um, I am getting two. Birkenstock is worth seven points, though. But Hellbane is worth seven. 
No, okay, Hellbane is worth seven as well. Because all Hellbane's gonna do, if I put it down at the end, is gonna mimic this, and so that's seven. So no, no, I'm gonna discard Hellbane after all. So that's seven points I'm getting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I discarded Hellbane, but I discarded Dauntless. So that was um, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points I got from Link. And Link is now a level eight star character. All right, so that was mine. And these cards are discarded. That means that you know I still have access to them. So you know in the next round I might still be able to get. I believe that's what discard means. Disc is it's not like they're trash. They've just been discarded. Okay. And now it's Jen's turn to play another card. And out comes Ducky Green. So Jen, she got a lot of duckies. And so this one gets four points for every four star card. Here's a four star card over here. Every air card. Um, and uh, right. And so every other air card, so it just can't score itself, and every mage card. So there's one, two, three. So Jen, all of these duckies are going to combo chain off of each other, plus combo chaining off the toil and trouble. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. Down to two more rounds. Now I bring out Birkenstock, who is going to do nothing for me. At the end of the game, there's 12 points to be had there if I've got a soldier on the left and a soldier on the right, but my last card is unfortunately not a soldier. So that's it. Nothing fancy. Jen plays Dig Claw the Mole. Gain, and now this is going to happen at the end of the tournament. Gain 20 points if any three cards in your tableau are from the same set. And all of these duckies, they are all from the rubber ducky set. So Jen's going to get 20 points off of that. Um, you know that was actually a really good buy for her once she realized she got all these duckies and then that. So that worked out really nice. So you can see Jen's deck is starting to come to light. And now it's my last card, Charon the Boatman. Upon entry, as soon as I play this, if this is lower, oh shoot! All right, playing Birkenstock means that this is lower. So he his so I had to play this first. I had to play this now because th this is lower than the eight, which means really I should have done this. I should have played Birkenstock because Birkenstock wasn't going to do anything. Then I played, and, and you know, so Birkenstock did nothing basically, just sat there. But it's going to be seven points because of my Volta Currents. Then this came out, and now my last turn is here. This is an eight. This is a four. So upon entry, if the star value of this is lower than the one to its left, gain five ranks for every card to the left. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25 points. All right, so. 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there we go. That was the right way to play those cards. And now Jen will play her last card, Bird Keeper um, Erica. Upon entry, gain four rank points for every different type among the cards in your tableau. Let's see. And so types there is the Citizen, Animal, Mage, Mythic. And another mage. So that's four. So Jen just got 20 points. One, two. All right. So, and that was it. The tournament is over. Now we do end tournament scoring. And um, what that means is we look at the metas. So there's 30 points here for anybody who has a light, car, a light card and a myth card on display. I've got a light and a myth because these didn't get flipped. Now it's interesting. So Jen, at any time, Jen, when playing cards, could have done the action, and she could have forced me to flip this, but then remember, Jen would be flipping her, so she'd be giving up 15 points, but she could have forced me to give up 15 points as well. And the interesting thing was, if Jen had forced me to flip this, then Sharon would have compared to this, and I wouldn't have got the bonuses. But of course, Jen didn't know Sharon was coming. So if she had known this was coming, it would have made sense for her to flip this. Even We both would have lost 15 points, but then I would have lost 25. But she didn't know that. So anyway, so I've got both, so I get 30 more points. One, two, three. So I'm up to 200 now. Whoa! Um, and let's see, Jen, she has... And this was actually... Oh, no, yeah, she does too. She's got an air and a myth. She didn't have to flip any of them, so she also gets 30. One, two, three. Okay, so that was it for the um, for the for the meta game bonuses. Now we get any end of round bonuses. This guy would get me twelve points if both on either side were the same type. They're not, so I get nothing from him. No ending, no ending. But I do get an ending over here. Seven points for every face up water card. So that's fourteen points sitting on these guys. So there's 
10, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, that's it. That's my final score. Although, interestingly, my special power is at the end, I can, um, oh, I can turn any one of my cards face up and I can activate an end effect. Is there any card I want to turn face up? Yes, I think there is because I want to turn another water card back face up. Are there any other water cards? I totally lost track. Nope. Right, okay, so I don't have any cards I'd want. But even, even if Jen had managed to flip one of my cards, at the end, I'd be able to get my card back. This is one of the very few ways in the game you can actually, once a card's been flipped, normally they're gone, but uh, Cardine can flip them back up. And I could also re-trigger an end effect, but the only end effect I've got, um, oh wait, I can, you can activate the end effect of a card in my tableau. So I got 14 points for my two water. I'm gonna use her power to activate this end effect again and get 14 more, boom. One, two, three, four. So that was actually pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. My final score, 229 points. 90 of that came from my collection, but even still, that was pretty impressive. Now, Jen has to tally up her end points as well. Let's do her deck box first. 25 points if she has no cards in her hand. She has no cards in her hand, so that's 20. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, and now she's got all these rubber duckies to score. Four points for each two star, light, or mage, and it can't count itself. So, there's four, and all right, so this is a mage, mage, mage. So, mage, mage, two point mage. So that's, what was it? One, two, three, four. So that's four times four, that's 16 points. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that was her first rubber ducky. Let's move on to her second rubber ducky. Again, four points for every card that has a, is a six star, a fire, or a mage. Let's see. Jen has no fires on display. She has no six, this is her, so she has no other six stars, but for mages, she's got one, two, three. So that's three times four is 12, 10, 11, 12. And now her other ducky, four points for every four star, air, and mage. All right, so again, the mages are one, two, three, Three, um, and then four stars. There's a four star, there's a four star, and all right, we already scored that one. All right, let's hold on, okay, let's see. So, four stars. Four stars, heirs, or mage. Score it, don't score it. So that's one, don't score it. Score it, score it, because it's a four. Score it, score it. That's five. This rubber, ducky green, well done, ducky green. That was four times five, that is 20 points. Um, 20 points. And so Jen's catching back up. She's at 213. Um, All right. So that was Ducky Green. Um, uh, Mummer the Merman, at the end, since Jen never flipped him by doing a clash, get three points for every mage card. One, two, three, four. Four times three is 12. Bing, bing, bing. Um, I am only now three points ahead of Jen, or was it four points ahead of Jen? And finally, Let's see, she scored all her duckies and do, dig claw the mole. Get 20 points if three cards are from the same set. These duckies are all from the same set, so that's one, two. Jen did it. Her final score is 245 to my 229. Boom! Jen wins the tournament. In a two-player game, we're playing for two out of three. Well done, Honey Bye. Her ducky cards definitely beat. And, you know, it's my own dang fault. I could have done much better if I had planned better. Um, but, you know, under pressure, I, you know, and I did do really well. I mean, I, th this devil did work out. It, it comboed quite nicely. The biggest problem, let's see, if I, well, even if I'd gotten the, if I'd gotten the Birkenstock, well, I see, I got, to, oh, also, um, Jen's special character is at the end, any, you may place any cards in your, any of your face up cards, including your deck box and accessories at the bottom of the store deck and gain rank points and millennia dollars equal to their stars. So if Jen wanted, now she wanted all these cards out because they all scored her points, but she could have said, Hey, to heck with this thing. She could have dumped this. It's a one that could have given her one more point and $1. So this guy can convert un you know, cards. She's not particularly excited about, but she was happy with all these cards. So she's just going to keep them all out. And that was it, Gen 1. She has won the first. Best out of three wins in a two-player tournament. Now, the last thing that happens in a tournament is 
Remember how um, there were promo cards that you could you could get via Fusion in the main deck builder? At the end, there is another deck of promo cards, and since I lost as a consolation prize, we're doing a reverse draft. I get first picks on the Soul Caliper, the Dowsing Blade Meridian, the Necronomicus Unbound, or the Gloricunus Destiny Blade. I get to pick one, and then Jen gets to pick one. So, at least, even though I lost, I get first dibs, and I can pick whichever one of these best fits the deck I have built so far and try to make it stronger. And then Jen will get to pick from one of the remaining ones. And now there's also, uh, I think the stretch goal has been hit for these. These are um, pro player cards. Because Jen won the first tournament, she is the most famous pro player in the world. And that means everybody gets a special card of her that gets added to their deck. So now everybody gets the uh, um, choose another promo card in your tableau, gain uh, rank points equal to three times its star rating, then flip it. So everybody gets one of these because Jen's character, Cardine, is the most famous um, player in the world. So everybody gets like a fan card that's going to go into our decks in the next round. That's an optional variant you can play, but that's it. So Jen has won the first of three tournaments. And I've got to win the second. If Jen wins the second, it's game over. Now, we, um, so it's done. We take all our cards back. Now, because this, you know, this could be the basis of the deck we play in the second tournament. And here's the thing. Now that Jen knows what my deck is all about, she could change her deck to kind of go after my deck. She could really kind of mix... Oh. You know what? Actually, if Jen wanted to, could she have won? Well, as I was up in the 50s, Jen's at the 40s. You know what? If Jen wanted to, she could have won. Because, remember Jen's power at the end, after she did all of her other end scoring effects, she could have used this to take any of her cards, trash them, um, you know, basically put them at the bottom of the super score, and score points off of them. And money. So if Jen wanted to, Jen could have said, hey, you know what, when she saw I won, she said, hey, I've got one more end effect. And she could have said, you know what, I'm done with duckies. All the duckies could go, and that means Jen would immediately get 12 more points, and that would have put her on top, I think, because she could have trashed something else. And not only would she have won the tournament, but she would be starting with... Everybody starts the deck building with 30, but she would be starting with 46. So she would have more money if she was willing to, to basically trash these cards by using her power. So Jen... Oh wait, oh no. But Jen won anyway. Right. Right. Jen won regardless. But if she wanted to, in addition to winning, she could dump these to have more money. But she's holding on to these because this was a good deck. And that's the important thing. I can see the deck Jen's got, and I could do deck building to try and mess with her deck in the next round, to try and interfere. But, of course, in the next um, tournament, at the beginning, it will reveal that the new meta is water, which is good for me because I actually had a kind of water-centric deck. And halfway through the next tournament, we'll find the next one is soldiers, but nobody knows that yet. And um, actually, do I have any soldiers? I play one soldier. So that's actually nice too. I, Link is, I'm going to want to keep him around because he'll actually get me 15 because soldiers are meta in the second tournament. Did Jen have any soldiers? No, Jen did not. So she's going to have to mess with her deck a little bit at least to be able to get a soldier in here to score that. And she does have some water. This merman can still get her the water. Although, you know, he wa well, he was pretty effective because didn't use him for the action, but used him for the combo with all her other mage stuff. So, that was it. That was the first tournament. And so now we start the next one. All the cards we didn't use, we get back. Um, we are going to get another booster of an additional six cards. And we can start the deck building knowing that now, in the, in the second tournament, it's going to be all about water. And we'll eventually find out it's all about soldiers as well. We do more time building, and then we do a second tournament. And if, um, if Jen doesn't win the second tournament, we go on to a third for the tie-breaking tournament. Although, in a, in a, in a, with more than two players, remember, you, you play all of the tournaments, and then it's final scoring. At plus money, you get points at the end of the game for money as well. But that was it, folks. That was one tournament. Kind of played halfway decently. I messed up a little bit. But hopefully you guys have a pretty good idea of how it goes. And that was Millennium Blade. You've seen the deck building. You've seen the tournament. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the button on screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.